They finally granted me access to Pika 1.0, so I thought I'll make an update about it. But a lot has changed, so instead of just giving you a short update, I decided to create a comprehensive course on Pika Labs 1.0. For now, this is still free, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to change somewhere in the future and it's going to be the near future as far as I can tell. But for now, all you need is to sign up either using Google or Discord. When you've already signed up for earlier versions for Pika Labs Beta, you can use the same account. So just use your Discord, authorize it, and then you will be part of the waiting list. For me, it took a while until Pika Labs sent me a confirmation email. It granted me access. I'm not a big YouTuber. If you're bigger than me, they might send it within days, maybe even hours. But if you don't have any following or a small YouTube channel, be prepared that it might take a week, two weeks, maybe even a month. I think for me it was close to a month. But when you finally have access, this is what it looks like. So we're not on Discord anymore. Instead, we are on the website pika.art. I'm going to link to it in the description below. And then you'll see Explore and My Library. It's not going as far as I can tell. Collect the old videos that you've created on Discord. So I've started here with a blank library. For everyone who's totally new, I'm going to design this video from the perspective of someone who has never seen anything related to Pika Labs. So we're going to go over the basics first. And in Discord, we use commands. Here on this website, you don't have to. So we can simply write our prompt right here and describe your story. No need for any commands. Let us try Pixar animation style running dog. And then we'll confirm via left click here on this little icon. And then it switches to my library and you can see the current in progress projects. As I said, this is the first one that's recorded in this new Pika Art website. Usually it takes, I would say, 30 seconds to a minute for one of these projects to be generated fully. Sometimes longer, sometimes faster, but this is usually what you have to deal with and what you should expect when you work on a project. Once it's done, you can hover over it and it should run directly. You can also download it here on the top right of this preview window and delete it. There's a full screen option below, but more important is retry, which is going to use the same prompt and regenerate it. And you can flip back in these small little thumbnails to the one that were already generated. There's also a reprompt option. It's going to highlight the one that you want to reprompt and add the prompt in the bar below where we could write our story. It becomes more obvious when I have generated at least a second project. So let us do that before I dive into the details here. Here's our second dog. Once again, I hover over it, it runs. But creating video generations like this is only one way. You can see under explore, we can use one of these. And simply try it out. Let us try the lighthouse by simply clicking on retry. And this uses now the exact same prompt, the parameters. And even if resources were used, for example, images or videos, in this case, I believe it was a video of a lighthouse. And this is also longer, it's seven seconds. Our dogs were three seconds. By default, three seconds is what you get, but you can now expand it in Pika 1.0 to seven by using the add four seconds parameter. Here on the lighthouse, this was used. Keep in mind that makes the image generation longer. And now that we've got two projects, let me show you. I click on reprompt and now we have this prompt down here in our story. I click on reprompt for the dog and it switches. It also takes the parameters. So we had add four seconds for this lighthouse and an image reference or a video reference. So this added also when you use reprompt. And that's just the difference between retry and reprompt. Let me show you yet another way to create a video, we can click on this image or video attachment icon and we can use an image. I use one from Midjourney, but you can use any. And I simply confirm without describing the story and this will simply animate 
my image, as I've said by default, three seconds long. And by the way, it was this image of a funny cute monster. And this will now be used and turned into an animation video. We can do the same and describe the story. So we'll use an image reference and then still describe the story. Best results though is when you leave that empty. So if I, for example, use cute monster dancing, it's not going to be perfect as our reference image wasn't really about a dancing monster. The monster just stands there and is laughing. So when you animate it, Pika Labs knows way better what would fit your image. In this case, it made the laughter a little bit bigger, the eyes. But when it comes to dancing, it doesn't really work. It tries to do something, but it completely loses the animation and the original reference. So that's something to keep in mind when you work with Pika Labs. But over time, you'll find out when you prompt enough. As I said, we can also use videos, and the Lighthouse indeed has used a video reference. So instead of using the monster as an image, let me make that empty, we'll now use a video. But be careful, it has to be smaller than 10 megabytes. We're going to use this one of a woman walking. And if I try to run this now, it gives me a warning message as it's too big. When that happens, and I've used a video from Pexels, so I just download it with a lower resolution, therefore the file size is smaller. And now everything runs smoothly. Here again, you can leave the story empty, so your prompt, or you can add a prompt. Both things are valid. When you leave it empty, Pika Labs gives itself a lot of freedom. So our reference was a real life clip of a woman and our result here, the image or the video generation of Pika Labs is now anime style. And in the second one, it's more realistic, but still somewhat animated. When you've got something specific in mind, it's a good idea to be specific in the prompt. Otherwise, just leave it empty and it's going to take the movement and mostly the character of your footage and it's going to play around with it. Let's talk about the parameters. You don't have to prompt them here anymore. So if you're used to using Discord, we had to add them here. But on the website, you have the functions to play around with them. For example, the aspect ratio. By default, it's 16 by 9 for videos. And here we can simply fix that and change it to the given ones. There is no custom right now. So you only have these six options. And below we have frames per second to adjust. 24 is usually what you want. The lower you go, the more it's going to look chopped. Let us create a Pixar style samurai. And I'll make this the TikTok format. So 9 by 16. And I also want to play around with the frames per second. So let me make that 8. And then we can compare it. Our first result is ready. And I've set 9 by 16, 24 frames per second. And the one to the left is 8 frames per second. This is now very chopped. It's more like a stop motion effect. When you click on this little eye icon next to your video generations, you can see information about it. So what parameters were used. The seed number, which is important for consistency. And then I switch back to 16 by 9 and 24 for our other projects. And we've got the motion control where we can set the camera, panning, tilt, rotate, and zoom. 
but we want to use the same seed for each so that we keep a consistent style. And this is the third option right here. But first we need to find the seed number that we want to use. So let me run this again. Pixar style samurai, this time 16 by 9, 24 frames per second. Now we'll copy the seed number. And for our next prompts, we'll keep the prompt, switch to this adjustment, add the seed number, close it, and now we'll use motion control. Panning to left and right will make the camera move in that direction. Same goes for tilt, but this for up and down. You can combine both, so if you want to have a tilt pan to top left, no problem with that. We've got rotate functions, clockwise and counterclockwise, and zooming in, zooming out. And it's possible to combine all four with one another, but the more of these you add, the more it's a gamble, at least from my experience. So if you make it a pan left, tilt, down, rotate clockwise and a zoom, it might conflict and not give you good results. And here are our results. So first one is just a panning to the left. We still have the same animation style, even though we don't have a good result, but you can see the panning clearly. The camera moves now to the left. And if we open the info, you can see was the pan left. Let me check the next one. This is supposed to be a tilt down. And the camera, it more zooms out than it tilts down. You will combine left and down. Kind of works, gives us a diagonal tilt pan. Usually panning is reliable and also tilting. Here we have pan right. More problems I've had with rotation and even zooming, especially when you combine zoom. Here we have an up tilt, and this one didn't fully work. It's just that the character moves down, but the camera doesn't really move. Here's a zoom in, didn't work at all. Here's a zoom out, and this one worked. So you can see zooming works, from time to time it doesn't. So you have to retry a couple of times if you're not getting the results that you need. I still have one running, and this is the combined one where I have tilt, pan, zoom, and rotate. And this one was too much for Pika Labs, so we don't get much of an effect. But you get the idea for this camera movement option. And it's all in the same style. Thanks to our seat number. Then let's go back to our original Pixar style Samurai. And if we click on Edit, we now have more options, which is Modify Region and Expand Canvas. So this is in addition to the options that we usually have, but we can't adjust the camera anymore. We also have the option to add 4 seconds. You've seen that with the lighthouse example and to upscale it. Upscaling just gets rid of the noise and gives a little bit more contrast so that we have better results. And we also have a negative prompt if you want something removed from the image generation and the video generation. If you want to have something removed from the video generation, you can add it here. It's also hit and miss, but you can at least try. 
We also have strength of motion, so if you want your character to move more, put it to the right for the max, and if you want the character to not move that much, go lower. Zero is the lowest. And we have consistency with text, so if you want to give Pika Labs more freedom, go down with consistency with text. And if you want to have it closer to your prompt, go upwards until you've hit 25. Let us check at 4 seconds. I simply select it here and keep everything as it is and confirm. This is going to give you the exact same video that you've had and it's going to add 4 seconds to it. Upscaling, let me add that as well. As I've said, it gets rid of the noise, add some contrast. And now let's get back to edit. The previous set, we have more options, modify region and expand canvas. Let's check expand canvas first. By default, 16 by nine, but we can now use this 16 by nine clip and put it in different aspect ratio. And is basically outpainting. If you're used to mid journey, you can see it as such. So if I want to put this 16 by 9 now in a 5 by 2 canvas, it's going to expand left and right. And I can even size this clip down so that we add top and bottom parts. You again leave everything else as is and then click on this icon and it should run. Finally, modify region. This could be seen as in painting. So you get a box, you can adjust that. Let me try to hit the eyes in all frames. And then I just add sunglasses. And so far Pika Labs has really surprised me with its accuracy here. We'll see if it works for this clip as well. Here's our upscale one. Now let's compare it to the original. You can see it especially in the face. We now have way more contrast. And usually it does a good job with the background as well. We use the upscaled one, so the colors are definitely more vibrant. Next one's ready, which was our at 4 seconds. We still have our original clip and then more stuff happens, it kind of loses it. So in this case I would retry it if it was a real life project. But you can see it keeps the original and then just adds 4 seconds. Here we have our expand canvas result. And here are the sunglasses. It's a good job I think, especially for our first try. One thing that's really cool is you can use an original video. So let me get back to our woman walking in a garden or what it is. And then we can directly modify region and expand canvas. So let me try to give her some sunglasses and we'll simply confirm. Let me make this a bit bigger and I'll try giving her a Darth Vader helmet. And as I've said, you can also use expand canvas directly. This is 16 by 9 in its original aspect ratio. Let me use 5 by 2 again. Keep in mind that it's going to use the story prompt as well. So if I keep this to Darth Vader helmet, it's going to try to add this to the left, right and bottom parts that are empty here. In this case, it would certainly make more sense to add maybe like a garden, green trees, stuff like this. Our first result is ready, the sunglasses. 
doesn't look natural, granted, but it's not a bad result. It even adjusts the sunglasses depending on the head movement. I think it's a good one. Then we had our Darth Vader helmet. Maybe I should have specified black Darth Vader helmet, but even that somewhat works. And finally our background. It did weird stuff due to my prompt, but if I make this green grass and trees, we should get a better result. And here it is, it looks a little bit dreamy, but not too bad. Consider that this is the first version of Pika Labs. When you think back to the first version of Mid Journey, and now it's already version number six, you can see the progress and the difference. And now think about what Pika Labs is going to look like in its fifth or sixth version. So it's definitely a tool to check out. The only question is how much is it going to cost when they put a price tag on it? For now, try it out for free. And when they've officially announced the pricing plans, then it's time to check out if it's actually worth your money and time. But this is all about using Picalabs 1.0. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.